Hey guys, it's Damon, and I've had a good number of questions on how I created this Tanjiro composite for the episode where I broke down the Demon Slayer production. And while I can't really break down everything because compositing is a complicated subject and there's a lot going on in the, this piece, I can revert this file back to where I started and show you a simple way to create an anime style composite. It's not going to quite look like this but we can delve into the more complex topics going forward later. So I'm going to quickly revert everything back to cell shaded layers and we'll, we'll go from there. All right, so I finished setting everything up and we're going to keep this as a, as relatively simple as we can. I am kind of winging it off the cuff. Um, this is not scripted in any way, but here is our comp um, with Tanjiro without any real effects applied to it. I did um, change the color of the background. Typically a background will be made specifically for a shot, so you don't need to worry about this. But this is a randomly generated sky that I created using Fractal Noise. And I had rendered and I use it for a ton of things. So I figured for this shot, if I just color corrected it, I can make it match. Um, but you'll notice that I have different folders on the side here. Um, one for the adjustment layers, I'll go over that in a second. Uh, I'll tell you what I did there. Um, and then all of my animation layers are in this folder. And then my compositions are in this one. Now, if you go to the composition settings for all of these, I have a comp called Render. That is 1920 by 1080 pixels, 24 FPS. And that's where the final render will take place. I have a comp called camera, or if we look at the composition settings, this is 1680 by 1000 um, pixels at 24 FPS. And I have a cell plus BG composition. If you go to composition settings, this one is 1684 pixels by 1190 pixels. These are industry standard numbers for the cell plus BG and camera layers. I don't do industry work. So you can modify these numbers if you feel like that's necessary, but typically that's uh, what those numbers are. Um, cell plus BG, you put the initial layout in this. I don't have a layout for this piece because this is not an actual cut that I've worked on. So that's not really as necessary, but just to show you the right way, I figured that I should probably mention the way that it's normally laid out. So you have your render comp. And then inside of your render comp, you drag your camera comp. And inside of your camera comp, you would drag your cell plus BG. Inside of your cell plus BG, you have the layout that I just talked about, and that'll show you the camera angle that you need to go to here. So if you need to modify this for whatever reason, you can go to the transform settings. You can scale it as necessary, rotate it as necessary. In this particular shot that is not necessary but this is where you would do that so inside of our cell plus bg since there's no layout i don't need the layout instead i have all of our cells and uh, the bg the background i'm not going to do any camera movement this is just a still shot so it's not necessary here but again this is where this would take place and then if i go back out to the render because of the sizes that i talked about earlier if I turn this effect off, you'll notice that the camera comp is actually smaller than the render comp. So you'll need to use this upscale, drag it over here onto this left side. Um, it's called the detail preserving upscale. And if you just scale it up, you can make everything fit into the final render properly. In this case, 115% uh, happens to work out but it might need to be a different number. You might need to actually move the comp a little bit, but that's that's fine. And this is also for one shot. If you want to work on multiple shots in the same file, inside of this render pre-comp where you have your camera pre-comp, I would also pre-compose this and set this to maybe cut one. If you have a second cut, you would have cut two. And you can separate them in that way if you want to work on multiple cuts in the same file. Uh, again, this is only one cut, so I'm not too worried about that. 
but now we have our detail preserving upscale but you'll notice that the detail preserving upscale uh kind of f***s up the details if i go inside of these comps you'll see that everything here is done uh with alias lines as opposed to anti-alias lines and that means there's no blurring on these edges uh these are all perfectly hard edges almost like pixel art and that's done so you can color key every single color and you have a lot more control over the final drawing and that's that's inside of this but if you go to this final comp you'll notice all that's kind of f***ed up by the detail preserving upscale so i added an adjustment layer on top of that and if i turn the adjustment layer on it smoothens everything out makes it look nice you don't need these hard edges in the final render only when you're working in here um and even if i didn't have the detail preserving upscale here you'll notice that i'm anti-aliasing all of the lines with this plugin right and it makes everything look nicer and more crisp so if you don't go through all this extra stuff that I, I showed you how to set up, which is not necessary for your own productions if you're doing freelance, um, this is more for anime work, like I said. Uh, if you're not going through all that and you just want to have your 1920 by 1080 pre-comp, you don't want to upscale it and whatnot, you can just throw this adjustment layer with the FXAA on top. It'll smoothen all your lines out, make everything look nice and crisp. And then you can still go into everything else uh, below the adjustment layer and have all the control that you need so this is something that you really only want to apply to the final render you don't need it at any other step other than after everything is done so everything unedited is inside of these folders and then after you do all of your adjustments then you can create this adjustment layer with the um the effect that i just talked about the fxaa fxaa is an anti-aliasation plugin uh, it creates these anti-alias lines out of the alias lines that I talked about before. And let me let me go back to the upscale version. And then in the case of the detail preserving upscale, it hides a lot of these ugly artifacts that are created by it by anti-aliasing all of those edges as well. So everything looks nice and clean again. You can also use this OLM plugin called OLM Smoother. It does the same thing as FXAA. Uh, it is another anti-aliasation plugin, but it is a little bit of a lower quality one. I prefer FXAA. Um, I have a link to both of these plugins in the description. We're going to be using a lot of the OLM plugins. So if you look at the OLM website, there's a ton of those that you can download. And they give you control over different aspects um, of the drawing. But in this particular case, I don't want to use the smoother. We are going to use FXAA. Now that all that's set up, we can go inside of the camera. Uh, we're assuming our camera is set up already. So we're gonna go inside of cell plus BG. And these are all of the different layers for our cells. Typically in animation production, we're gonna turn everything off just so I can kind of demonstrate this. We'll keep the background layer on, we'll keep Tanjiro on. We'll create a new solid that covers everything in the background. And we're going to pre-compose these. Uh, this is just to show you something. You don't need to do anything that I just did. But typically in animation production for anime, they don't have transparent cells. They are almost always on white backgrounds like this. Since this is not for an actual anime production and is for my own personal purposes, I do have transparencies. And it is helpful to do that. But... For the sake of the studio work though, this is not the way the studios tend to operate. What you can do to get rid of these white backgrounds is you can use... Why is all of that selected? You can use the OLM color key effect. Oh, my bad. Let me exit the pre-comp. I created this pre-comp to act as if it was just one PNG. Um, you can use the OLM color key effect and key out the white. And that's pretty much all it takes to turn it into a transparent image it's the same thing you'll notice these are not keyed out and that's because they are not perfectly white uh, typically in anime production they don't use perfectly white they'll use a very slightly off white and that's because like i said these backgrounds are not transparent so in order to key that color out they just uh they keep everything else as a slightly off white so that's what you would do if your image does not contain transparency. Uh, in my case, it does. So I don't need to worry about any of that. We can just 
undo everything that I just did right there. And you would do that for every layer. But since that's kind of already taken care of in my case, we're not going to worry about that. I'm going to instead show you how you can manipulate certain aspects of this drawing to make them look a little bit nicer. So first things first, we're going to turn everything off except for the background and Tanjiro. And we're going to see what kind of adjustments we can make here. So if you want to color correct Tanjiro, we could use this effect right here. It's called Lumetri Color. It's underneath the color correction. There's a bunch of different methods for color correction that you can do. Um, I know Tritone works really well. Uh, if you want to change specific things, right? You can also blend with original. So let's say I wanted to give him more of a, a blue tone to match this night setting, right? Maybe I'll, I'll do something like this, right? And you can blend it with the original to a degree. You could also pick the colors directly off the background. Like, let's say you're, you want your highlights to be that color. You want your shadows to be... Um, or maybe that's your mid-tones, and then your shadows are closer to black, right? And you can use those to make your character match into the background a bit more. Just blend it with the original, so that you don't erase the original colors completely. I know Triton can work really well for that. Um, but Lumetri Color, if you go to... I'm sorry, uh, where's it at? Color Wheels? You can change the temperature of your drawing if you want to make it warmer or if you want to make it colder, right? Um, in this case, this is a, a night setting, so maybe we'll make it a bit colder. You can change your saturation if you want to make the saturation higher or the saturation lower. In this particular case, maybe I'll lower it a little bit. Um, you can change your exposure. Um, and these are similar settings, right? To uh, Maybe if you were matching some sort of specific look that a camera might have. You can mess around with all that. Um, you can also throw, where's it at? Hue saturation. I'll just type it in. You can change hues directly like this. And this will offset them a little bit, uh, bringing them bright. You can see the shift right here though, if you look at my mouse underneath the channel range. Um, so right here, I'm shifting all of the original red tones to be pink. The pink tones to be blue, the blue tones to be uh, cyan, light blue, the yellow tones to be red, etc. Um, so it, it does directly show you that uh, that change. And if you spin the wheel all the way around, you'll see it does loop around. You could also use the brightness and contrast effect to change the, the brightness of the drawing, the, the contrast. And just play around with all these and try to do color correction that makes it look like your character is actually in this background. I think for this particular case, I'll just be simple and we'll we'll try some trithone like this. And then we'll just blend it with the original, maybe 65%. Now, another thing that you can do, maybe we, we can pre-comp the Tanjiro layer. Call this, we'll just call it Tanjiro or character or something like that. I'm going to... I was going to copy and paste the effect that we just put on the character onto the pre-comp instead of the character, so we could have an empty pre-comp. But uh, the setting I selected uh, already kind of took care of that for me, so it's fine. Inside of the pre-comp, we have the unedited one. And uh, outside of the pre-comp, now we can edit it and add effects on it without destroying the original image. So let's duplicate this pre-comp. And we're going to add a, a gradient ramp. And we don't need this tritone effect because the tritone is for this layer that's beneath it. But for this layer on top, we're going to add a gradient ramp. Um, the default gradient ramp is white and black. And what we can do here is we are essentially drawing the focus of your eye subconsciously. Usually you want the focus um, of, a, of a drawing to be the character's head. So... We could also do a radial ramp that might look kind of nice. Um, with a radial ramp, the black is the center of it. And the white uh, is the outside area. So in this particular case, we're going to swap those around, right? Because we want the black to be on the outside and the focal area to be towards the face. 
And this is not a lighting related thing. This is just to draw the focus of the eye. This is going to be a very subdued effect. So we're going to change the blending mode to multiply. And as you can see, all of the whites have become completely transparent, but the blacks are still there. So you can draw the focus maybe towards Tanjiro's face right here. And then if you go down to transform, you can change the transparency to something that you feel might look more appropriate. I'll do 45 for now. We can always mess with that some more later. Another thing that you can do, we're going to duplicate this again. We'll turn off the gradient ramp. Uh, we'll just delete the gradient ramp and the triton. We don't need those for this layer. And what we can do is set this back to the normal blending mode. And remember how I showed you how you could color key effects earlier using the OLM plugin? So if I wanted to key out, let's turn these other la layers off so you can see a little bit better. Uh, fix the opacity. Set it back to 100. So if I key out a color, it'll disappear completely. Like if I keyed out the blood, now it goes bye-bye. Um, if I key out this light color of the jacket, the dark color remains, but everything else goes bye-bye. Um, what we can do with this is you can manually pick every single color that you want to change. Uh, I'm going to grab all of the shadings. And what's cool about the OLM color key effect is you can change the number of colors that you're grabbing. So just for now, we're going to say maybe eight. And we're going to grab all of the shading colors. And we're going to leave all of the light colors. Um, technically, I believe I should be grabbing these colors as well for his earrings. So we'll, we'll do that. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Uh, so maybe I need nine. We're going to grab this. Uh, grab it, please. I believe in you, buddy. There we go. So now you see we grabbed all of the shading. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to check this color key box and it will invert all of our selections. So now if we turn the layers underneath it back on, you'll see that we have the original and then we have these new colors that we've grabbed on top. Um, if I use a fill to temporarily show you what we've done, uh, you can see a little bit easier. It looks like this. So now what you can do is you can manipulate the, uh, the shading colors. So shading, uh, typically when the, our sun is warm, right? Uh, so it gives off yellow light. So anything that it touches is going to be on the warm side of the spectrum. Anything that faces away from the sun is going to be on the cold end of the spectrum, which would be your blue type colors. So people tend to think of shadows as black. Um, introduce a little bit of blue into your shadows whenever you're creating shadows. So we're going to create like a maybe here, like a bluish black. And then... If you just lower the opacity to make it not so obnoxious, but more of a subconscious effect. Now your shadows feel a little bit colder, which is kind of nice. If you want to go a bit further, instead of using a fill, we can use another gradient ramp. And instead of black, we'll do a blue color. and we could leave the white that's fun we'll reverse it because let's say our, our light is coming from above us so we want our darkest areas to be towards the bottom right so we'll do it like this maybe and then if you swap the blending mode to multiply you get a similar effect to what we talked about earlier you no longer need this fill la layer you can leave it if you want it's completely overwritten by the gradient ramp so now you have a nice little gradient going from bottom to top and that's pretty nice if you wanted to and you don't feel like grabbing all of those colors you can use the threshold effect to grab darker areas of the image or lighter areas of the image that's a really quick way to grab the shading it's not always going to be accurate like you'll notice it's not grabbing the shading on his face right now but it's got pretty much everything else so that's a really easy way to do it as well. Or if you wanted to extract just the line art, because our line art is pure black, you can also use this to extract line art really quickly and easily. And then you could color key the line art. 
get rid of the white and now you've got a layer of just the black line art if you wanted to keep that separate for whatever reason. And essentially, color key is your best friend when it comes to manipulating the colors of the character. So what we're going to do, we're going to do one final thing to this Tanjiro. Alright, so this is the unedited Tanjiro. I duplicated the comp again. And what we're going to do this time is we're going to grab his blood colors. We're going to color keep. Uh, we're going to fill just so I can see a little bit better. You can see I've made the blood like a, a pure red. Um, We could change the color to a more blood... A more appropriate blood color, I guess. And now you could add other effects to it if you wanted. Like, a, I I'm just going to do this to show you how you can manipulate the blood. I, I wouldn't throw a, a glow on blood in any way, shape, or form. But, you know, just to show you that this is separate. We can manipulate it separately. Something I'm going to do. Yes, we're going to duplicate this blood layer one more time. And you know what? Let's, let's stay organized. We're going to rename all of these layers. So we'll call this blood and blood two. Um, this is the gradient. So we'll rename this one gradient. We'll rename this one. Uh, these are two different gradients. I don't remember what they're for, but I'm not going to mess with them. <laughs> that was the gradient for that. Oh yeah, this was the focal gradient. And this was the shading gradient. and then the base Tanjiro image. Um, so for this second blood layer that I just created, what we can maybe do is throw some roughened edges on here. Scale it up a little bit. We'll turn off the other blood layer so you can kind of see what's happening. Maybe we'll throw it on spiky. I'm trying to create some messy edges within this blood. So we'll just play around with these settings a little bit. There it is, that's the effect I want. Why are you not doing that? Where I want you to do that. I'm going to change this color so I can see a little bit easier. Maybe we'll make it blue. Before the rough and edges, I'll throw a simple choker and put it at a negative value to make the details go outwards. If I, I'll just show you what simple choker does really quick. So this is the base image. If you bring simple choker to a positive value, it'll get rid of the edges. But if you bring it to a negative value, it'll add to the image, right? So we can put it at a little bit of a negative value and then throw our rough and edges to ensure that this bleeds past the edge like I want it to. And I'll, I'll just try the rough and edges thing again. Do it like this. Yeah, now you can see it's bleeding past the edges. That's more like what I wanted. There you go. Now we've got some messy edges. You throw the other blood layers color back on. You can set the fill to be the proper color. And now we've got that, that messy blood. Maybe we could lower the transparency of it. So that it looks like it's staining his skin almost. And his clothes over here. And also, you're going to see that... Well, I'll change the color to make it more obvious. It's going past the edges of the line art and the character. So what you can do is over here where it says track mat, you can set the track mat to the base Tanjiro layer and it will no longer go past that edge. Um, that does, by default, make the Tanjiro, lo Tanjiro layer invisible, so you do have to go back and fix that. Um, and then because I changed the blood color for you to be able to see it more easily, I'll have to go back and fix that too. So we're going to do that really quick. But yeah, there you go. You got that nice effect on the edge of the blood that does not go past the uh, the drawing. Maybe you want it underneath the line art too. I showed you how to separate the line art earlier, so we're going to do that really quick. Just to show how you can fix this. Hold on, let me zoom in. Sorry about that. How to fix this issue where it kind of discolors the line art. So you could use the OLM color key. Or you could use the threshold effect that I showed you earlier. I'm going to use threshold just because that is the method I showed. Um, so for the sake of consistency, we're going to do it that way. Bring the line art back. Color key. And we'll key out the white. And then the black is back on top of the uh, the red. 
So that issue's been fixed. So you can see how you can kind of manipulate the drawing as much as you really need to, honestly. Very, very helpful. If you want to go a step further, we could organize even further. We could pre-compose. We could say, uh, we could call this maybe Filter Tanjiro. And now that's all organized. And now you can turn all the other stuff back off that we had on before. You should focus on one thing at a time when you're compositing. You'll notice how I focused on matching the character to the background and the environment before I even looked at all this extra crap that we've got going on here. Focusing on one thing at a time and blending that one thing at a time helps a lot for keeping the workflow not confusing. It's very easy to get confused when you've got this much going on at once. So we're going to start with something simple. The next thing we'll do, we'll just throw the wind in. We'll blend that. So for the wind, what you can do is you can just set it to white uh, with a fill, and that'll get rid of those black edges that we had. And it's as simple as just lowering the opacity, honestly. We'll put this at maybe 25. And that is a good enough effect for wind. Um, don't worry about the squared off edges. Like I said earlier, if you go to the final render, those are no longer there because of the adjustment layer that we made with the FXAA earlier. So if we go back to our cell plus BG and we can just copy and paste this fill effect onto the other wind layer that I have. I have these wind layers separate because they are animated separately and they move in separate directions. Um, so I have, I have it set to where I can manipulate them separately. And then by changing the opacity of that layer, the wind is done. It really is that simple. If you want to go a step further with the wind, you could add a blur to it. Uh, there's a bunch of different types of blurs that you could use. Um, for the sake of moving wind that's moving fairly fast, you could maybe throw a directional blur. Might look nice. So for this wind that's supposed to be moving up and left, maybe we could do something like this. And you'll see it, it blurs all the edges. If I increase the blur, you can see what it does a little bit more. Uh, don't go crazy with it. You do still want to see the shapes that the artist drew. You don't want to completely ruin everything. Um, but that is something you can do. I'll throw a directional blur on the other one as well. We'll go up and right. We'll increase the amount. And you can see down here especially how that's affecting the, the piece. Now next thing, there's these embers. These are as simple as throwing a glow on it. You, should, you can throw a glow on it and it'll make some nice embers. The orange edges actually help with this particular um, effect. Um, because it gives two different colors for the glow to apply. You'll see there's an inner glow of yellow and if you look really close there's this outer orange glow that looks really nice. Um, if the artist didn't draw that the glow would be one color which is still not a problem. It looks fine. But in my particular case that's why I set it up that way. You can always duplicate the embers layer. You can always duplicate the embers layer. Um, let's say if you add this glow, we can duplicate it. And then for the one that's in the background, you can throw a fill on top. Maybe just for the sake of seeing it, we'll color this blue. And you can already see how that affects the glow. If you make the glow radius larger for that layer, something like that could happen maybe. Uh, maybe I'll do this in red to actually try to blend it into the drawing a little bit. There you go. That's a quick, simple, easy way to add the embers. Now, if you want the embers to affect the lighting on Tanjiro, maybe you'll duplicate it one more time. I'll set this to a blue fill just so we can see it a little bit easier. All right, so what I've decided to do for this layer is I got rid of the glow, but I do still have the fill. Um, I have it in blue, and what we're going to do is we're going to offset it and maybe scale it down just a bit. Should be good enough. And now what we can do is we can apply a blur to it. We'll go with the Gaussian blur. And if I just increase this amount, maybe something like this, you can kind of see the effect that we're going for. Maybe I'll change the fill color now that 
we can see what we've done back to like a yellow. And we'll change the blend mode to screen. And that should help it blend just a little bit. You can lower the opacity. And now that we've done that, if you remember the track uh, matte effect from earlier when we did the blood, we can set this to the Tanjiro. And uh, again, that makes Tanjiro invisible, so we do have to bring his visibility back. And now, and you'll notice, especially on this hair, this one ember, uh, um, doing this to this hair looks quite nice um, down here. So you could just lower the opacity a little bit more, maybe that's too intense, and that might look a little bit better could also increase the blur, and I think this looks quite nice. So maybe we raise the opacity again, something like that. There's different ways you can play around with that, but that works. Now again, one layer at a time. Maybe we want to do this fire next. This fire is also really easy. You can throw a glow on that. Um, we're going to throw a second glow, uh, glow, sorry, and we'll change the radius a little bit. And then we'll throw up. Oh, did not mean to do that. <laughs> Control Z is your best friend sometimes. We'll throw a third glow and we'll increase the radius a lot. And uh, honestly, that's good enough for fire on that sword. You could also try the different blend modes. Again, screen works really well a lot of the time. So does hard light and so does add. Um, because it is fire in a very dark situation, uh, I think it's okay for it to draw a lot of attention like this with the hard light. Um, maybe you go a little bit softer on the glows. And that might look a little bit nicer. I am going to stick with the normal blend mode. I think I like it the most like that. And what we can also do is we can throw some turbulent displace on it. And if you're unaware what turbulent displace does, I'll change the amount to something really small. And I'll set the size really high so you can see how it's kind of manipulating that fire. And then if you do it vice versa, let's say the amount is like 50 and the size is really small. Um, you can actually almost give the edges of the fire some texture. It's entirely up to you. Something else this can be used for is a heat distortion effect. So maybe because of all of the fire that's in this scene, I want to add a new adjustment layer at the top of this layer stack with a turbulent displace on the top. And you can see how if I animate the evolution, how this can create kind of a heat distortion effect. Um, we're going to lower the amount a lot, maybe to like nine. And that's a lot more subtle. That looks a lot nicer. You can go even more subtle than that. So we'll go with five. And that that's gonna be a nice heat distortion effect. So we'll set this to here. You can lower the size as well. It doesn't need to be quite so high. Maybe we'll go 25. A little bit higher. We'll go 55. Yeah, I think that's a really nice effect. So you could do that and then all you would need to do is at the beginning of your cut, keyframe the evolution, and then at the end of your cut, just rotate it however much you think feels right. Uh, for that animation to play. Um, if you want to go even further with this, for the sake of being able to see, we're going to fill everything. We're going to draw a mask. And then if you feather this mask at the edges, throw this turbulent displace back on and turn the fill back off. Now this area that that fill was in is going to have the turbulent displace effect and the area above it will not. Um, the feather is going to cause it to have a little bit of an effect on the edge. Um, if I turn off the feather, you can see that it doesn't affect this top area at all, but it does affect this bottom area. If you look closely, these areas are not as perfectly aligned as they were before. Or maybe if I turn the effect up to show you a little bit more, we'll turn up the amount like this. You, you can see that the bottom is being affected and the top is not. Um, but then when you feather it out, now it fades the effect slowly away going towards the top, but it does still exist at the bottom. Again, I do this with the fill, that way you can see exactly what areas are being affected. Um, and then obviously the turbulent displace should not be such a high amount. It should be much more subtle. 
but it creates a really nice heat distortion effect. You can control it a bit more, uh, modify it to your taste. I'm not going to use it here, but that's how you can make fire feel a little bit more integrated into your shot. Now, since we have this one fire that we just created, we can grab these effects and copy and paste them on the other one. So now this other orange fire also has a color. And that effect is basically done. This uh, pink fire right here you can do that too as well. And now it glows. If you want to manipulate these more, you can throw a fill on them. Right? And you can make them whatever color you really want to. Or maybe... You could also tint them. So that way you can keep the multiple colors. The whites can stay white and then maybe you just change the blacks. And that'll that'll do this. Or the tritone from earlier. Maybe you could keep the blacks perfectly black. You can change the mid-tones. Be whatever color you want. And then you could keep the whites. And then when you throw the glows back on. You have complete control over all of that. So we'll go back with a pink. For the highlights, maybe that's a little bit too white. So maybe we'll introduce another color in there. Maybe something like that. And fire really is that simple. There's not really much more to it. Let's uh, copy that tritone onto this pink layer in the foreground. And there you go. Now, if we go back to the final render, pretty much done. A nice simple version of the Tanjiro comp from the last video. Maybe you want to darken the background a little bit more. So you could always bring brightness and contrast into here and literally just darken it. And that'll bring more attention to these bright areas. Uh, you'll notice the difference almost immediately. It looks quite nice. Another thing that you can do if you want to add a light source, and this is going to be the last thing that I show. Um, definitely not the only way to do this but it is a way to do this. We're going to create an adjustment layer. We're going to call it sun. Uh, in this particular case, it would be more like moonlight, but you get the idea. Up here, we're going to create an ellipse of sorts. And if I throw a fill on here, just to show you the area that I'm selecting, I'm, we're not going to use a mask. You could use a mask, create uh, a color like this, and then set it to screen and then you won't need to use this fill effect at all and maybe that's how you want to create your light source like if i wanted let's say a blue moon in here um and then i would just feather the edge uh, you could do that and you can very well do that with a mask rather than the uh, adjustment layer but the reason i chose to use an adjustment layer is because instead of doing that uh, i did this just as a quick little demonstration but instead of doing that what we can do instead is keep this on the normal blend mode. And if we go over here to curves, you can drag this down and you can see how that's going to darken this area. What you're doing is this right side is the bright areas of the image. This left side at the bottom left is the dark areas of the image. And then the middle is the midtones. So by bringing the bright areas down, you can darken the scene by bringing the dark areas up. You can brighten the scene just like that. And you can also manipulate the blue values, red values, yellow values, all that separately. So if I'll just raise the blue a little bit, maybe we'll do a little bit of red so that it gives kind of like a purplish tint. And then raise that a little bit. Something like that. Now we can feather it just like before. And 
the top area is just a little bit brighter. And you've created a quick and simple moonlight or sunlight. Now if we go back to the final render, there you go. So that's going to be it for this lesson on compositing. This was a very short, concise, simple compositing lesson. But you can see how quickly and easily you can make something that looks pretty powerful. But we added blood detail that wasn't here before. Some stains on the skin and stains on the clothes. Showed you how to manipulate all of the colors. We added glows. And we added some motion blurs. And that is the basics that will help you create a, a good looking scene. You can create, as you can see, a quite competent looking composite using just those simple tips. Um, and then the more you train your eye to learn how to balance colors, uh, the more powerful all of these tools will be. So yeah, I, I think that's it for this beginner level composite. Thank you for watching and uh, stay tuned for more content just like this. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It helps me a lot. Thank you and have a good day.